Hey everyone, my dear champions, welcome to this another beautiful session of motion and time. Although we have completed the chapter nicely, we have done questions also, right? So today we are here to just talk about how to arrange a mind map for this session, right? Because once you have finished, you should be able to just arrange your thoughts, arrange all the concepts into a nice mind map. And that's why this session becomes really important. It's kind of a revision of whole chapter, including a mind map, right? So the way we learn this chapter, will keep on revising it and also make a mind map simultaneously. Fine. Okay. So people, let's start with motion and time. We learn about this complete chapter in a very nice and very subtle manner, right? So let's start with how we started understanding of motion and time. We started with the measurement of time, right? So what we did, if you want to measure time, nowadays, sir, we have all these instruments, but you know what? There was a time when we did not have clocks. We used natural events to measure time, right? You look at the sun and then you say in the day, oh, it must be around noon. It must be around evening, right? So this kind of a thing you could have done. So that's why natural events was something which was telling you time back, right? In your ancient times, right? So that's why. But what is the requirement? How to choose something so that you can say this could be a measurement of time. I could take this, this particular event as a reference for measurement of time. What is that? It is the periodicity. In the day, Sun rises in the east, sets in the west every morning and every evening, right? True. Moon. Every night you see a moon, it goes back, right? Kind of thing. So we have these lunar calendars and all these different, different things, right? So that's why all these natural events, there was a pattern to them. So you're always looking for pattern when you choose something to be like a reference for a measurement of time. And that's why people started thinking of sun and moon to be like a reference to tell them at least a sense of time. Okay, this might be this. You can't be exact, no? But still, you can have a good idea. Alright, so this was how we talked about measurement of time. Now we had ancient devices also, right? Looking at sun and looking at moon, you can have a vague idea if sun is over my head, it's like around 12 kind of thing, right? But you know what? They developed ancient devices also, right? What were the ancient devices? We have learned about sundials. Sundials which take care of the shadow of this dial right this this uh, uh, this instrument and there is a dial beneath it right sun is uh, because of sun rays there is a shadow and that's why this shadow moves to tell you what time it might be similarly water clock sand clocks you might see them nowadays in gift shops but you know what they were indeed an ancient measurement of time devices right okay so ancient measuring devices are Sundials, water clocks and sand clocks. Just be, you know, just be, be, let them be there in your mind. Okay. So ancient devices are done. Next, we talked about simple pendulum. There's a nice story to it. I have, I have given this story to you. Galileo was one day in, in, a, uh, in a fort and he was just looking at a chandelier which was swinging. And suddenly it struck to him, maybe, maybe this could serve as a reference for time. This could be used as a machine for timekeeping. This could be something... I can use for timekeeping, right? Why did you think? Why did you think so? Because we have already established this. We are looking for something, a pattern. We are looking for periodicity in an event so that we can use it for timekeeping. Now, this swinging chandelier, Galileo thought there is something unique about this. What? It was kind of a pendulum. And that's how we started thinking, why not pendulums? You see those grandfather clocks, no? Tuck, tuck. Tuck, right? So what is this? It's all pendulum based timekeeping machines. Simple pendulum is the base. So let's see. Simple pendulum. What a simple pendulum? It's nothing. It's quite a simple device. You have a fixed end. You have a thread and then you have a mass or we call it the bob, right? So this is the bob and the middle position, right? Middle position is what we call as a mean position. One end is the extreme position A. Another end is the extreme position B, right? So two extremes and one mean. That's true. What kind of motion is this? It's an oscillatory motion. First of all, it's an oscillatory motion. How do we say, how do we know, sir? Because there is a mean position and you can see a body going to and fro around this mean position, correct? So it's a to and fro motion. That's why we call it the oscillatory motion. A body starts from one position and comes back to it, right? So that's why it's a oscillatory motion. But you know what? What's important? 
Oscillatory is fine. What's important is it's a periodic motion, right? So it comes back to the same position in a particular time. So we can say a pendulum completes one oscillation in some time and that time is what we call as the time period of that simple pendulum, okay? So you got this simple pendulum, you understood the oscillatory motion, you understood periodic motion, you also understood what is time period for a, for a uh, simple pendulum, right? So that's why this becomes really important. On what factors does it depend upon? It doesn't depend on mass of the bob. It doesn't depend on what else? It doesn't depend on how high you take it. I mean, still there is a limit, but still it doesn't matter. If you leave it, if you leave the pendulum from here or you leave it from here, it's okay. Still, time period will be same. It doesn't depend on that. What does it depend upon then? Length. Length is the factor on which it depends upon, along with gravity, but it's okay. If you're on Earth, you won't take care of gravity. It's okay. Length is the factor on which the time period depends upon, okay? Nice. So we understood pendulum then? Nice. So that's how. Motion and time, measurement of time, ancient devices, and simple pendulums, right? So we are slowly, slowly moving towards measurement of time. We are going in depth of measurement of time, right? If we have understood all these, this you can understand this is like a chronological order, right? How you can say this, sir? Ancient devices, then pendulum-based devices, grandfather clocks, kind of, right? Today also we don't use them. We have moved to a modern technology, the modern devices. What do they have? They have a crystal. What is the name of the crystal? Quads, right? You have answered this to me, by the way. Nice. So modern time measuring devices, wall clock, table clock, digital clock, the clocks, which in the morning goes like tit 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 and you know we just snooze them off and and doze off again right this is what happens but still these are all the modern devices we are using what they what they have is they have a crystal quartz crystal this is how the modern timekeeping machines are telling us time okay nice so this is what modern devices look like all right now what else so this was all about time this chapter has two segments one is time and one is motion so this was all about time right now let's talk about motion and when we talk about motion we have we somehow end up talking about how fast or slow something is what do we call it speed so what is speed it is the distance covered by an object in a unit time how much distance you have covered in how much time if you divide them you get something which we call as speed what is the physical significance of speed it tells you that how fast or slow a body is right one who takes minimum time to travel some distance is faster. We understand this, right? If let's say you are sprinting, right? If you are running, if you take, if you take little time in going, let's say that 100 meter race, who takes lesser time wins, no? His speed is more, his or her speed is more, that's why, right? So got it? One who takes minimum time to cover same distance is faster. That's how we say someone is fast or someone is slow. If you take more time, they're slow, right? Rabbit and the tortoise race, if you remember, correct? All right, but there's a different reason why the rabbit uh, lost. That's that's okay, right? So next, okay, we saw speed is one thing. How to measure it now, right? This is the progression you have to think. Motion and time, one segment is time, one segment is speed. In time, what happened? In time, we talked about, first of all, measurement of time, ancient devices, middle devices, simple pendulum, then modern devices, right? Okay, this was the whole thing. In speed, we have to talk about measurement of speed, all right, then, then, how to measure it? First thing is what you are measuring, that is speed. How to measure it? Okay, we have devices now. Speedometer and odometer. Odometer for distance, speedometer for speed. That's true. That's true. So speedometer and odometer. This speedometer is, both of them are there actually in your car or you would say your bike, your scooty, whatever you have seen, right? The, the dials in which the needle moves, sometimes to digital also nowadays. It tells you speed. What speed? The speed at that instant. Right, so this is what a speedometer tells you. It tells you the speed of the vehicle at that particular instant. What does odometer tells you? Odometer tells you the distance covered, right? You have those, uh, there's a small segment in the dial where, you know, numbers keep on changing as you just drive along, right? That, what is it telling you? Oh, it tells you how much my, my scooty, my bike, my car has traveled, the distance covered, right? That is the odometer, okay? Fine. So this is what speedometers and odometers are for. Speedometers are to measure the instantaneous speed of a vehicle. Speed at that instant is the instantaneous speed. Simple, right? Odometer to measure the distance traveled by the vehicle. Easy, simple thing. All right. So speed we have seen. 
Speedometer was telling you instantaneous speed. All right. Now, speed also can be because of speed, the motion could be categorized on two things, right? It could be uniform or it could be non-uniform. So, what is a uniform motion? If a body covers equal distances in equal intervals of time, you can see over here. 0 to 4 meters in 2 seconds, 4 to 8 meters in 2 seconds means another 4 meters in 2 seconds, 8 to 12 meters in 2 seconds means another 4 meters in 2 seconds, right? Every time this car is covering 4 meters in 2 2 seconds means it's a uniform speed, right? For every interval you can say it is 4 upon 2 means 2 meter per second, true? Okay, here 0 to 4 meters in 2 seconds, all right, so 0 to A, O to A, we can say it is 4 by 2, 2 meter per second. Now 4 to 10. Total is how much? 6 meters, no? 6 meters covered in 2 seconds. Total speed is 3 meter per second. 10 to 20. So distance covered is 20 minus 10. That is 10 meters, right? Divide by 2 seconds. 5 meter per second. Speed is changing. And if you talk technically, it's increasing. It's an accelerated motion, no? So, right? So that's why speed is changing. It's a non-uniform motion. See, uniform is something you don't want any change. Could change you change. That is uniform. Non-uniform is? Either increasing or decreasing, but important thing is changing. That is non-uniform. Okay, fine. Nice. So that's why this is what you call as a non-uniform motion. Unequal distances in equal intervals of time. All right. So this is uniform and non-uniform. And now we come towards average speed. I told you, speedometer takes care of the instantaneous at that particular moment. But let's say you do a 100 meter race. You finish the 100 meter and you get your time. I covered 100 meters in some time. Do you know in between did you went high or low? No, you don't. It doesn't matter. No. So you just have a total distance. You have a total time. You just divide it. You find average speed. This is my average speed throughout the whole journey. It's, it's more like a generalized statement. No, easy to tell. You can't tell. No, for first hours, I was like 10 meter per second. For next two minutes, I mean, if you are driving your car, you can't say, no, I mean, you don't tell it like this. For first hours, I drive with 10, 10 kilometer per hour. For next two hours, I drive with 50 kilometer per hour. You don't tell this. For the whole journey, I drive with approximately 40 kilometers per hour. You, t you tell the average. That's what average speed is, right? So average speed is total distance upon total time, okay? If there is a cyclist who took 40 minutes in reaching to the railway station, but after railway station, he went to his home in 30 minutes, right? He traveled some distances in different, different time intervals. So you total the whole distance upon the total time taken for it. That is the average speed for the whole journey. Okay, got this easy question. Okay, fine. So that's how we get the average speed. And last, but not the least, we also talked about graphs. Now I understand. A lot of us are, are just afraid of graphs, but I hope if you are still afraid, make sure you have watched the session on graphs. It was a, it was a nice session. We have talked about the distance time graph. Okay, so motion and graphs. When you talk about distance time graph, if it's a straight line, and I have seen a lot of you making mistakes. If it's a straight line, means distance is same. Okay, if a body is just sitting at its place, the distance will remain same. That's why this looks like a straight line. A distance. Time graph, whenever it's a straight line, it means the body is at rest, okay? If it's a straight line passing through origin, it means it is a, it is a uniform motion. What do we mean, sir? Speed is constant. So how can we say that? Because slope is constant. It's a straight line means same slope, right? So it's a uniform motion. Next, non-uniform motion, if it is curved. I told you, non-uniform could be changing, right? It should be changing means speed should be either increasing or decreasing. So it doesn't matter. Non-uniform motion, either this graph or you can also take care of this graph, distance time graph. Both are non-uniform motion, but uniform motion is only this one. Important, okay? So that's how we dealt with graphs, the distance time graph. So I hope we have revised everything, right? You have seen the segments. Time is one. Then it is measurement of speed. In speed, you talked about speedometer, the devices. You talked about average speed. You talked about uniform and non-uniform motion. Then you went into graphs. In graphs, you have only distance time graph, right? This is the whole picture of this whole chapter. It's not difficult. You just have to remember it. Don't worry. I'll give it to you, right? Now, a small homework question for all of you. Make sure you're, you give me the answer in the comment section. The formula to find the total time taken by simple pendulum is... A, B, C, and D. Easy now. Give the answer. Don't worry. All right, people, make sure you are a part of Telegram channel because I'll give you this mind map, the notes and everything on the Telegram channel itself, right? 
So it'll be helpful if you are there. You'll get it directly. Fine, nice. So people, I hope you understand we have got you covered, right? We are trying to cover everything and we'll cover everything. Questions, graphs, tests, everything. So don't worry about that. Just be regular, be attentive and keep learning, all right? Now, the last but not the least, make sure you like this video if you think it was helpful. Make sure you share it to your friends, your, your people who you think it might be helpful for. And you are a subscriber to the channel because whatever we do, we do it for you. But if you're not a subscriber, you won't get to know, right? So make sure you are a subscriber and you press the bell icon. You will get notified also, right? So like, share, subscribe, people. It's the least I want from you, please. And we'll meet again in the next session. Till then, take care, keep learning. Bye-bye.